Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. And somebody posted this on Facebook and asked if, where they knew how to get the file. And I don't know where you got this picture. I don't know if it's copyrighted, but so you're kind of copying somebody's work. But one thing somebody suggested, just trace it off this picture. Well, this picture isn't true to form. I would not think this thing would be just three and a half inches tall. So before you start doing any of your tracing, I would figure out if you want this 12 inches tall. And if this is a, a vial, it's probably six inches tall. So the whole thing needs, well, let's just say that vial is six inches long. Uh, a couple of things we can do. Let's, uh, let's draw a rectangle around this vial. And you can see it's only 2.7 inches tall. Well, if we group all this together, in the top picture will have to be grouped in it. I started tracing one, then I realized how little it is. So if you group this together, control G, and then we'll put a parallel dimension to tool line, and it's 2.7 inches tall. We'll make it a little bit bigger font so we can read it as we stretch it. So we'll make it 100 points. Now let's take this whole thing and stretch it from this corner. Now it's 4.11 inches tall. We'll stretch it again. And if you have a vial, uh, this is kind of like a rain gauge vial. So they're, wow, six inches. That's perfect. So we got our picture done. So now you can start drawing, and I'll just take this one away. I like using the three-point curve, and there's a couple of straight lines in here, which is this one. So we're gonna take our two-point line and go from that node to that node. Then we're gonna get our three-point curve, and it's gonna connect on that node, and then we're gonna go down to this node, and we're just gonna curve it. And you can see we can't quite do it, so we can add more nodes or it'll be a base of your own, you know, that you could um, control what it looks like. We can get this almost exactly by moving these nodes around. And then take your two point line and go from, and see it snaps on that node and go to that node. Now get our three point line back and this time we'll go from just here to here and we'll do that curve. Now we'll do from here to here and we'll do that curve and see it's getting on that node. So we ought to be good. I think we're not, I thought I drove it. Well, I didn't draw a two point line across that top. Get your two point line, which is a straight line and just, I can't draw straight. Hold down the control button and it'll draw straight. And get your three point line back again and take it to that node and then just arch that a little bit. Now, if you don't have any leaks, it will fill in. So let's fill this in. And it looks good. I would smooth it out a little bit. It looks a little rough, but the flat is flat. I got a little bit of a hump right there. So we can take our shape tool and this is basically a cusp. And then you could play around with this to your heart's content. I see my angles off a little bit. You could take these two nodes and go up to a line horizontally and it'll put it flat. And I think we're good to go. Looks a little bit funny in there. We could take our smooth tool, which you have if it's, uh, if you have X7 or above, we'll make it about a little bit of half an inch. Grab your item and just kind of smooth that out. Because that's going to be the, the beauty of the base is the smooth lines. Let's make our deal one inch. It'll make it go a little faster, a little smoother. And as long as you don't touch that straight line, you should be good. I think the straight line is put the bait to put the vial in there. So you're going to have to play around with this to uh, 
for the next step. So now let's just move this mark fill out of the way and left click, right click, make sure it's a hairline, and it is. And then they just have the notches, and, and you're gonna have to do some testing if you're gonna use, let me see what this wood looks like. It looks like MDF, but I would say just using plywood. And they have a joint right opposite of the flat part of the vial. So let's get a 0.13 line or a rectangle, because that's what your plywood is gonna be is 0.125. You always want it a little bit bigger. Let's make it, let's make it a, a half an inch long. Whoop, I've got my ratio locked. Let me back up and unlock my ratio. Well, I did the, I'm doing the wrong thing. I've got it flipped. This is the 13, but we can rotate it 45 degrees, 90 degrees, sorry. And that's way too long to put in the wood, but you'll see what I'm doing. We're gonna go about, let's see how close these are to that. Yeah, they're only doing like a quarter of an inch, so 0.25. That makes it a little bit better. And you want some wood out here. And the good thing about it, you only have to do this one time on one of them. And we got a joint. Now, before I cut that, I should have made a copy of it, Control D, make a duplicate of it. And they've got the other one almost at the top. So let's put that one almost at the top. And I'm just thinking, you know what, they might have them. No, they've got them on the outside. So then you could put this deal pretty much wherever you wanted. It's gonna be at a little bit of an angle. And then just take your virtual segment delete key and delete that line. Now you'd wanna smart fill it. That's gonna seal all your joints and make it one piece. Now what I would do is cut this out and do some measurement. Uh, we don't need this anymore. Kind of looks funny. Um, whoop. I can't really see the vial. They've got the square part up the top. I can't imagine that vial going all that way. In my, and now looking at this, it's not very symmetrical. And we could take away nodes by taking the shape tool and delete that node, delete that node. Let's try deleting that node. That looks pretty good. You could do a lot, lot or a little bit with this, delete that node delete that and knowing you no, we won't want to do that because we lost our somehow we lost our square but it's still there the square part the flat part so what I would do is control D and make a duplicate and mirror this thing and then move it over and I can see that my square part isn't square anymore so let's do this and you could always do this with a two-point line. Uh, let's just go from like right there, holding down the control button and go right there. Use our smart fill tool again and now we have a better flat spot. Get rid of all this. Control D and make a duplicate. Let's left click, right click. Well, it's because it's a fill. The fill was still there. Let's make it red. Outline of red. And then you could control D and make a duplicate and mirror it. And then with the control button down, measure this right here for your vase, for your bud. And let's say it's let's say it's a 0.75 inches away. Let's say it's three quarters of an inch. Just take your parallel dimension tool 
And you probably want to make it a little bit bigger. See, that's only 4.1. Let's set our nudge factor on by 0 0.02. Let's grab that item and just start moving it away. And it depending on what size it is, there, there's 0.75. I'd make it a little bit bigger. And then here, once, if that tube is going to fit in there, they made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them. So you would just make ten of these. And then this part, uh, the ring, we need to think about. And let's take a rectangle and let's just make an object right there. So that could be our ring. So our ring is... Uh, let's make it 1.75 big. Let's look at it. It's going to fit. So let's make a 1.75 circle. 1.75. Back up and lock our ratio. Now we need to measure the inside of this. And... From there to there is 1.13. So let's make a 1.13 circle. 1.13. Get this in the center and it should lock in the center. And it did. <clears throat> now I'm gonna work in the center of the page. So I'm gonna control G and group that together and hit P. Because I like working in the center of the page and this is one of the reasons. So we need 10 of those squares. So let's go 0.13 by 0.25. I need to unlock my ratio and go back to, to 1.3. That's our eighth of an inch. Go P, put it in the center of the page. Holding down the control button to get right there to be equal. Now we need 10. So 360, 360 divided by 10 is 36 degrees. So we need to control D and make a duplicate. Move our rotation to the center. It doesn't look like it's in the center, so check it again, and it is. Control D and make a duplicate and rotate it 36 degrees. Control D, 72 degrees. And then from now on, Corel ought to be up. Sometimes my um, laptop gets slow. Control D, 72. Control D, Control D, Control D. Now, let's get this big circle out of the, I grouped them together. Let's ungroup them. Object group and ungroup, and I know it's control G. Let's weld it and see what happens, and that's what we wanted. Let's hit P, and there's your inside of your sprocket. Of course, we made the, you know, it's, it's different size than this. This might even be this one. And then just do that for the bottom one. Do the exact same thing, measure you know, take a rectangle and see what you think it looks good. Now our new rectangle is two point, I'd make it 2.9 inches. So make you a circle that's 2.9. Take your pillow dimension tool and measure that to right there. And your next circle should be 2.8 and do exactly what we did there. It should fit together good, a little bit of glue. Uh, this has been stained. Looks like maybe not, just sand it. I would definitely sand it. And it should be pretty easy to put together. The only question I would have is, yeah, they'll, they'll all fit in there. I was gonna say that piece, that piece right here might come in conflict with some other pieces, but it shouldn't. Anyway, I hope that helped a little bit and thank you for watching.